Welcome to the Voiceless Podcast. We're here for another episode. What up, Voiceless family? I'm your host, Meech. And when we're talking about wrestling, we got the co-host, John, who's down in Atlanta. Say what up to the people. Yo, it's the little bee sleeping in the East co-host, that boy, Meech. What's up, everybody? Yes, sir. And okay, I, I liked SummerSlam, y'all. I liked SummerSlam. We're going to review SummerSlam. Um, <laughs> but when we get to the Sasha Banks and Oscar match, just know a rant is coming. Just know. I'm just preparing y'all ahead of time. But not only that, we're not just talking about SummerSlam. We're talking about we're going to remember a little bit about TNA today. We're going to take y'all back and just point out some of the best things we enjoyed about TNA. And then we're going to have Defend This Wrestler, a new concept that we have introduced uh, last week. And we got another wrestler that I got to defend and that John most likely is going to call trash. I'm not going to tell you who the wrestler is. I'm going to just wait till we get to that segment. And then we're going to end off the show with the better stable debate, the Hardy Boys or Edge and Christian or the Dudley Boys, which, you know, they all are hall of fame tag teams but let us start with i just wanted to get your thoughts on uh everything that's going on and i know we usually talk about wrestling but i just want to get your thoughts on uh the jacob blake shooting and most of all the nba right now is um the boston celtics and the toronto raptors they're supposed to start their series today which will be a great series Uh, i think that series is going to game seven but they're talking about possibly sitting it out because of what happened to Jacob Blake. And for the people, the audience that are listening or watching this, Jacob Blake was shot seven times in the back uh, by police officers. And he's not dead, well, thankfully, but he's as of now, he's in a hospital. He's paralyzed from the waist down. And but he was shot for no reason. He was an unarmed black man. And the NBA players are thinking about what they can do. Even though they're in the midst of the bubble, they're thinking about possibly sitting out and specifically the Boston Celtics and the Toronto Raptors. So I just want to get your thoughts on that real quick. Well, I feel like whatever decision they make, it should be a team decision or if not a group decision between both teams. And they, everybody should be on point. There shouldn't be anybody that's like I that um, that's not willing to do so. But I do understand from from another side of point of view that this would be seen kind of selfish, you know what I'm saying? And if not, this would be like, you know, you're taking away probably some people's get away from all the nonsense, you know what I'm saying, as well. Mm-hmm. So what I say they should do is one, whatever day's decision they should make, do it as a team or do it as a group collectively and make sure that everybody's on board with it. And number two, I think, yeah, at least for the NBA, they should at least at least be with the with the with the players on whatever. I don't want to see you know them you know penalizing everybody because no because this is with the entire point of having all everything that's there like having the Black Lives Matter putting all the all the um, the signs and stuff on they on their backs of their jerseys and stuff like that. It's the, mm-hmm. this, that's the point of everything. So that's what I have to say about it. Yeah, for me, um, I understand the uh, the emotion behind it. Like, obviously, if the players all join together, then I'm in support with it. Um, my only thoughts, my only uh, my my other side of thinking about this to me is, I just believe when you're the players and you have a platform like this, and then when you also have the NBA, uh, the NBA has been in support of the players. Right. For the most part, I can't say about the NFL. Um, The NFL seems like they're starting to try to be more supportive. But at the same time, um, they're not like the NBA. The NBA has been supportive with the players from from the beginning um, of everything that's taking place, especially with the commissioner, Adam Silver. He seemed like he's been on point with the players and helping. And like, actually, he seemed like he cares about what's going on and and how the players support. Uh, the Black Lives Matter movement. But once again, I don't really think it's a movement. I think it's a lifestyle when you're black. But um, my thoughts is, is that I think they should use the platform. I know it's a tough time to try to play basketball and everything like now uh, because of everything that's constantly happening. But I feel like when you have the whole world watching you and everybody's watching the playoffs right now, I think you play these games, but after the game, when they ask you questions about the game, you don't answer them. You just take it back to 
what's going on in the world. You become more of an advocate for voting. You become an advocate for the movement. You bring that up. You bring more light to it. And of course, the things that's going to really bring change is uh, like policy changes, law changing, things like that. But I feel like when you when you're like protesting and you sit out games, I'm like, I don't know if that's really going to make a huge difference, because to me, I'm like the NBA has been supportive of you. Um, the, the problem is, is racist people. And the problem is, is police officers um, sitting out games. I don't see how that's really going to help. I think you use the platform. I think you use the whole world that's watching you and you use it to your advantage. And you talk about and you bring more light to everything that's going on. So that's my thoughts on it. But I understand the emotion behind what their uh, I think their hearts in the right place. But I just think uh, they it, sh it should be a better decision because I don't feel like everybody needs to march. I feel like everybody needs to use their platform that they have to their best ability. And because the NBA players play basketball and the whole world watch, I think they should use that and use that to bring more light to the Black Lives Matter movement and to police brutality and everything like that. But yeah, that's my thoughts on it. But yeah, so now let us actually get into wrestling. I wanna get your thoughts on the Thunderdome. What's your thoughts on the Thunderdome? How the WWE's being more creative about getting the fans more involved, uh, well, through webcam <laughs> um, in these events now? I feel like they took a step back. I think they could have done because I feel like they took a step back and just saw what the NBA was doing and being like, that works. So might as well we should do it. You know, I think what they should have done instead of uh, just throwing up all the people on webcams, have them up a, a couple rows higher and keep the fans who, who could be there live and to be there because you take away a little bit of fan interaction. But I do. And on top of that, I think it's a lot better when you have fans there creating their own, you know, creating their own noise and feeding into like what's going in on the match. Mm -hmm. And I don't hate the idea of, you know, at least getting more people involved, especially what have them on weather cans. I just think we could do better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, like you said, I think, um, I, I actually like it. I like the, the whole getting the fans and webcam. I think it looks pretty cool, but I think, um, like you said, having the wrestlers that they had in the past that were ringside, um i guess behind the the pixie glass or whatnot i think if you still have them as well it will continue to even make it feel more normal of course you can't have a bunch of fans there right now everything that's still going on with the coronavirus pandemic but i feel like if you add the webcams with all the fans that's there through webcam but along with the uh the fans or the wrestlers who was playing fans um there as well it just creates the more of the environment that can become like oh this is more normal for us but i don't I'm, I'm not against it i think it's still pretty cool and not only that we can actually sign up to do it like you can literally sign up to be on monday night raw smackdown or uh, during a pay-per-view and i think that's pretty cool i think you can like yeah you can literally do it I, I was about to sign up for monday night raw but then i forgot that i actually work still during this pandemic but thankfully i still work so hey I was going to sign up, though. It's pretty dope. It's pretty cool, though. But I also want to get your thoughts on Retribution. How they're wrecking I like havoc. The, I like the idea. Of it. I like how I like their numbers. Um, and I like the I like the idea that this is like a new force. I just hope this doesn't end up like uh, the Nexus 2.0 and one guy just stomps them all out. And I hope whoever is the unveiling from these guys, I hope it's people that were previously fired. I hope it's NXT talent. I hope it's a lot of people we're not expecting to see. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I hope whoever's the leader of this group, I hope it's somebody that we've been waiting to see come back to the WWE or come back to wrestling. Maybe CM Punk. Maybe mm -hmm. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Maybe... I don't know, a retired wrestler from way back when who's just all like, you know what, Vince, I'm, I'm coming back for you, dog. Or maybe it might be John Laurinaitis, whoever it is. I can't wait to see what happens next. I feel like the CM Punk idea will be like the best. CM Punk, this is like right up his alley. Like if they had a leader that's like behind the scenes and we come to find out it's CM Punk, that will be like 
I will have to literally give the WWE a like standing ovation with that one because the writing for me as of late hasn't been the best. It hasn't been the best, but if they pulled that off, because then not only that, CM Punk comes back. That's a great return in itself, but we come to find out that CM Punk's been the leader behind all these uh, attacks by the Retribution. It would be greatness, and I'll be like, dang, WWE, y'all did something with that one. But I, I actually like the retribution. I think uh, I think you I think we need stuff like this. Like we have Raw Underground, and now we got Retribution causing havoc. I think I think the WWE needs this type of stuff that keeps people like intrigued. They need because uh, we always talk about this. They don't have a superstar like the the standout superstar in this generation right now. They got a lot of g uh, good wrestlers, a lot of great wrestlers, but it's not that one standout superstar that makes you watch just for himself or herself. Uh, or maybe just himself. I think maybe people watch for Charlotte. Charlotte is probably the standout uh, female uh, wrestler. But um, but yeah, I feel like Retribution is pretty good. I think it's cool. I think it's cool. But let us go on to the SummerSlam review. Oh. Let's do it. Let us start off with Bailey versus Asuka. <laughs> uh, uh, I, it went exactly how I expected it when I said the last time about the prediction. Some interference is going to happen, and I got exactly that, and it's going to lead up to Bailey somehow retaining that dang title. Mm -hmm. The one person who I thought was going to lose did not lose. God dang it. But it is what it is. What do you have to say about it, D? Uh, I mean, see, at the time, in my notes, it was a good match. I think it was a good, it was a solid match. A lot of good submission reversals. But knowing the ending to the pay-per-view, the match is trash now. It's trash now because I don't know how it ended. No, I'm just playing. Um, I think it was still a good match. Uh, I mean, to me, I think Asuka should have won it because we know what happened. Matter of fact... Let us just move on from this. Let us talk about the Sasha versus Oscar match. That's the, what I really want to get into. I'm going to let you speak your piece then. I'm being completely quiet. Oh, man, WWE. I told you guys. I told you. If somehow, some way, y'all had Oscar win either one of these matches, and it had to be the match against Sasha Banks, I was going to have to go on a rant. And... I'm sorry I got to do this to you guys, but I just don't know. I want to know why. I haven't cut a promo in so long, too, but I just I don't know why every single time Sasha Banks gets a WWE Women's Championship, her title reign ends so quickly. What do y'all got against Sasha Banks? Let me know. I just let me know because in us Sasha Banks fans, we just don't know. It just seems so weird because we get we get our hopes up high. She wins the championship belt. But then it's just like we know deep inside it's not going to last long. We just know it's not going to last long. And then and then right after Asuka lost to Bailey, I was just thinking in my head like, oh, no, this is just setting up for the biggest fail right now, because not only is Asuka injured basically because she faces Bailey in the match, the first match of the night for SummerSlam, but she then somehow goes on to beat Sasha Banks, a healthy Sasha Banks, a 100% Sasha Banks. Now, to me, just tell me this: how does how does that make Sasha Banks look? Come on now, like. Asuka wasn't even healthy. She already been through a match. And somehow, some way, she's just able to beat Sasha Banks like that and make her tap out. Oh my God. Like, just just tell me your thoughts on this, John. Just tell me your thoughts. I just I can't I can't deal. I can't That's deal. That's exactly how it sounds like. She weak. She getting folded. <laughs> can't even beat Asuka after a match with Bailey. Hey man, just you just got to accept the fact she's just destined for L's, man. That's just her career. I'm joking, I'm joking. But on a serious note, though, I feel like they were put in a really bad situation because either you have, you either have, you end Bailey streak, or you let Sasha lose because you don't want to make Oscar look bad. Mm -hmm. And I can understand the reasoning behind it because let's just keep it real. So it's like it's not like Sasha's losing any any uh, credit because of the fact it's like this. Sasha's one of the still one of the many few people that 
that can consistently beat, you know, um, Char- Charlotte. Mm-hmm. It's one of the things. And on top of that, it's not like she's just in slouch in the ring either. She's very good at what she does. One of the best. Mm-hmm. In almost all wrestling, I still got to watch more uh, Japanese women's wrestling to, to say, like, she is the best almost across the board. Did you see that power bomb off the side of the ring she did to Asuka? Like... Like, and yet Oscar somehow got up and still won the match. That's what I'm saying. Like, it just don't make any sense. <laughs> it don't make any sense. Like I said, you have to still make Oscar look good because people love Oscar. They do. Mm-hmm. Like, if anything, that is like the female of quintessential babyface for like, for like, the, like uh, that brand SmackDown. Mm-hmm. And like this is something you just gotta accept because I just looked at it like this, you know. I pay attention to Oscar like in her social media and stuff. She is getting a quite a fast and quite big following. People love that wrestler, man. I'm sorry, she, she, Sasha Banks has had to take one for the team. I'm sorry. I actually like Oscar as well. I like Oscar, but I just think if you if you have her win, you have her beat Bailey. Bailey's been the champion for I don't even know how long. Sasha just won it. She just won the championship. And then the way she won the championship was in a whack fashion, too. Like, and then it's like, then you then you take the belt off her that quick. It's like, and then I get it. Some people could be like, they're setting up for a Bailey versus Sasha. And I understand that. That most likely Sasha may go over on Bailey and become the SmackDown women's champion. But as a Sasha Banks fan, I don't know if her title reign is gonna be long and even if she beats bailey it's just because by everything that's happened in history as far as every time she becomes champion her title reign ends quickly we don't ever get a real title reign so it's like even if y'all setting up for this big match between bailey versus sasha it still makes me lose hope it still makes me lose hope because i don't know if she's going to keep the championship for that long and have a solid reign and I actually liked the match. I liked the, the match between Sasha, uh, Sha- Sasha and Asuka. Thought it was a good match. I just didn't like the ending. Trash ending. Trash ending. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm just going to move on from this because just, I just can't deal with this. Are just, you sure about it? I can still hear it in your voice, man. No. Nah, Are you a, sure you want to just let it go? I'm, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just let be at peace with this. If, if we did this podcast on the same day as SummerSlam, I would have went. 10 times more off but um i got days <laughs> to calm down so so now i'm more calm now um but most likely if people see uh watch the the one heart productions channel on youtube you're gonna see my review of SummerSlam, my reaction videos y'all gonna see that i was a lot more mad in those videos so check those out <laughs> uh, but tell me your thoughts on the street profits versus andrade and angel garza Honestly, a very good match. I didn't expect the synergy to have, especially with all the, the spots they did. Mm-hmm. But it, all this match made me realize, it's like, yo, Montez Ford might be that guy. Mm. Athletic. He's highly energetic in the ring. And on top of that, he oozes character every time he does something. I'm just like, man, when he goes solo, he better pop off. Mm-hmm. Also, I do like, I think my favorite spot on the match, though, was when... um the dude was going for like a, a big splash outside the ring and they got in a uh, Andrade mm-hmm. and Garza caught him. I think oh, that's yeah, my yeah. favorite part. <laughs> but the bottom line is I was entertained by this match. It's probably one of my more favorite tag team matches. This might be tag team match of the year for me right now as it sits. Just to add <laughs> on to what you were saying about Montez Ford, like, did you see that frog splash, the turnaround frog splash that he, he finished the match with? Like, that's yeah. incredible. Like that's it. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that outside of him doing it. And I'm like, that's that. Yeah, Montez Ford definitely got a bright future. Um, but the other person that I think has a bright future is Angel Garza. I just feel like he he's kind of a star in the making if they do right by him. Like I feel like his charisma and his in ring skill uh, it stands out to me. I don't know what it is. It just kind of stands out to me. Andrade's good too, but Angel Garza to me he has he has something. Um, I just feel like they had to bring it out of him a little bit more. But I feel like uh, I like the match, too. I think the match was really good. I thought it was a good tag team match. I probably wouldn't go as far as probably the best tag team match this year uh, because I got to really think about that and see, like, I can't remember all the tag team matches this year. But uh, I think it was a really good tag team match. And Angel Garza, I'm I'm saying it now, that's a star in the making. 
I'm saying it now before everybody else jumps on the bandwagon. I think Angel Garza will be a star. Um, so let us move on. Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose, and they changed the stipulation. It's not even. It wasn't even a hair match no more. It was a leave the WWE match, basically. <laughs> so they changed it <laughs> last minute. <laughs> wow, man. I was actually looking forward to these to these uh, to the other wrestlers, man. I was looking forward to it. But it's kind of crazy how I said that she was going to lose this match. And I think it'll look better if she lost her hair. And I'm like, all of a sudden, dang, she lost, she lost the match, but she got to leave the company? Come on, man. Yeah, I don't know what's I'm not going on. That. I don't know if yeah, I'm not feeling that. What's going on, WWE? Keep her around. I wonder if that's just because, like, everything that's happened with the her kidnapping case, basically. The, I feel like maybe she mm. just needs some time away from the company and that's how they're doing it they're like um that she's not actually leaving the wwe she's just leaving tv right now i feel like that's what they're probably doing because i'm pretty I sure think, that's something devastating mm-hmm. for her so um i think that's the i think that's a that's the safer thing to do especially mm-hmm. with the fact that um it, it's like especially if she you knows maybe she wants to relocate move get all this stuff done i'm like yeah because that's a really serious thing Cause like remember that time a, a LeBron James house got up vandalized? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd be like, that's a serious thing that happened. You know what I'm saying? And so of course I let this, I let this employee of mine get get what they need to get the, needed done, and then they can come back to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. But as so, far, so yeah. especially if it's like a attempt at kidnapping, God dang. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, definitely. I feel like she needs to probably well, she got to do whatever she got to do to get, um, I guess like to just you know, deal with that situation. Um, So definitely, I think she's going to come back. And when she comes back, she's going to be, you know, she's going to probably have a different character change or something like that. But um, as far as the match goes, I think the match was kind of, it was a brawl. It was pretty vicious. It had, it had a lot of, it had some sloppy moments in it. I'm not going to lie, but I feel like it's still overall is pretty good because I think both of those wrestlers need more experience, especially in a singles match. And a singles match that lasts a good amount of time. And I think it was good, um, good experience for both of them. I feel like Mandy Rose, I feel like Mandy Rose could be a star. I think she just needs more experience, more matches, and then just needs a little bit more confidence in the ring. With that, I, I think she's going to be better, though. I think she's going to be pretty good if they give her more experience, more matches and things like that. Um, but yeah, now let's go to the to me, the best match of the night. Just from the storytelling alone, Seth Rollins versus Dominic Dominic Mysterio. All right. And are you sure you're not you just not a uh, masochist? Are you just sure about that, man? Come on. I think that was the best match. I'm just saying. Because to me, are you... I look at <laughs> Dominic Mysterio. This was a debut match, and he, it was impressive. It was impressive. Like, of course, he's working with Seth Rollins, who's one of the best, and he can probably get over put over anybody, but. Like just the storytelling, and then, um, and it it just it didn't seem like Dominic Mysterio was like an amateur. He seemed pretty like he was game. He was game like the whole match. Like he, I like his selling too. He was able to sell pretty good. Like I thought, I thought that match was really good. I thought it was good. Mm. So you thought it was good? Yeah. You thought it was good. I, I liked it because of the fact you were right. The storytelling was on point. And I was, like you said, I was caught off guard. I was surprised he was able to do the 619. But it is what it is, though. It is. I just knew the results of what were, what was going to happen. Because mm-hmm. I was like, there's no way that Rey Mysterio is going to, you know, get anything done in the ring. I'm looking at I'm looking at his son. I'm like, yo, we're going to get the same results as last time. It's just that he's going to get a couple more hits in. The thing is, I feel but, like... Oh, go ahead. Hmm? I was gonna say the only thing, the only difference is this. I was really entertained. I was very well surprised about how much he's got, he's able to do, in, and for his big unveiling, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm I'm happy to see this is all pull and pull. Is is showing the fruits of its labor? You know what I'm saying? I'm glad to see all this happen. Yeah, like for because I was about to say you better cut the segment. Mm-hmm. For me, I I think uh, I feel like what would be more interesting though, I'm not gonna lie, is if they have Dominic Mysterio turn on Rey Mysterio and join Seth Rollins. I just feel like that would be super interesting. 
like but at the same time i feel like what the the wwe may do for a little while is make them partners ray mysterio and dominic mysterio and they become a tag team that may become champs one day um that's what i feel like they will do but and then eventually i feel like they're gonna have dominic mysterio turn on ray and they may have like a wrestlemania match i feel like ray will want that ray will want that in his like resume like towards the end of his career um having a match against his own son exactly <laughs> Like, how many wrestlers get I to do that? <laughs> are you having a farewell tour? You know, you can have wrestling your own son and stuff like that. I, I can see that happening. I'm trying to think, has there been a wrestler that's had that has had a match against their own child? Uh, not that I can think of, like, right away. Like, yeah, I can't really think of too many. Because I'm, like, trying to think of one right now. No, I can't even think of none. Straight off the top of my head, I can't even think of any. Yeah, because I can think of like siblings facing each other, like Cody versus Dustin, but I cannot think of or Brett versus Owen or the Hart family in general. Um, yeah, <laughs> even knowing that they're not actually related, Kane versus Undertaker a bunch of times, but I'm trying to trying to think has it ever happened? Oh. Well, we had Shane versus Vince. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, that's that's, that's the true one. Really. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Shane versus Vince. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Other than that, though, all I got to say is, hey, they put on a very good show and I was very surprised about from everybody how well this all turned out. And once again, I'm surprised that Buddy Murphy is still around doing some cool things. I say Buddy Murphy should be a singles competitor, though, but that's all I got to say about the match. And I just got to give props to Seth Rollins. He's He's been coming through lately. I've become more in a, I've becoming more of a fan of the Monday Night Messiah. Um but I feel like he needs more, like, he needs to be put in a title picture, though, eventually. Um, let us move on to the WWE Championship match, Randy versus Drew McIntyre. Uh, around this time, though, I was kind of mad already about Sasha and Asuka. Not going to lie. So I think this match was good, <laughs> but I was already mad at that point. So I didn't really care too much now because <laughs> literally the match before was Sasha versus Asuka. So I was already mad, but I think the match was good. Um, it was a great match. Uh, I think the finish was terrible. How the heck you going to have Randy lose with a roll-up pin? We still doing roll-up pin finishes? Like, in 2020? <laughs> like, <laughs> that's the only thing that really made me lo a little bit mad about that match. But I thought it was still a good match. Uh, they both was at the top of their game. It was a good match. <laughs> Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. At least this match made me like Drew McIntyre just a little bit more. Because I was like, at least I know with Drew, I'm going to get a very quality, very quality wrestler, you know what I'm saying? So I'm glad he's in the WWE. And I'm glad he got a match against uh, Randy Orton. I'm just mad the, the wrong man lost, but it is what it is. Man. They should have put, I think Randy <laughs> should have won, but at the same time, I think eventually Randy will win. I think. They're still. It's. I think this is gonna be a rivalry for a good amount of time. Um, yeah, I say. You know, I say the only thing that I wish they would do more is that since like I, I feel like this is gonna be like a thing that I have an issue with, like the entire situation of the. the I'm gonna call these the bubble situations because you know even the NBA is in it. We're not being creative enough with these matches, and we're not nowhere nearly being enough um, innovative with what we can do, especially with no fans being around. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I would at least like to be, I would at least like, you know, more opportunity to bring in more specially unique items and stuff like that to the ring. Or if not, use different locations a lot more often. But I see we get them here and there, like the bar fights, the swamp match, and, you know, and, uh, and the boneyard match. But I just, for me personally, I would just like to see this trend continue, but at least be done correctly, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I don't know how many, I don't know how much they can really, you know, live up to the Boneyard match. Because uh, every match after the Boneyard match hasn't been as good as the Boneyard match. But, um, but I mean, that's understandable, though. That's Undertaker and AJ Styles. Like, come on now. So Yeah, well, yeah. Boneyard match on Undertaker again. Yeah. <laughs> what about, let us, let us move on to the last match. The Fiend versus Braun Strowman. <laughs> Oh, thank God we're getting creative and actually leaving the ring. We got to use the ramp a little bit. Um, Honestly, I'm glad to see The Fiend in more matches with Braun Strowman. I actually am a fan of this uh, storyline, though. 
because I always like the idea of like, yo, you used to be that dude's bodyguard, and now you're the man. Mm-hmm. I, I like that, and I like how Rob Bray is trying everything in his way to just mess with him. And I just, this is just to me, like I just like this, man. Yeah, yeah. and the fiend won. She, the fiend is now the champion. But the biggest thing that happened is what happened after the match. That guy Roman is back. Reigns. Roman Reigns and does dude, he looks like a heel. Is is the WWE listening to our podcast? Did they turn Roman Reigns heel? Hey man, only time can tell because yo, it's I find it kind of suspicious how Roman Reigns shows up and all these dudes and hoods come up out of nowhere. So hey man, he might be the leader of that group of people, you know, just going going at everybody. And now, I think though, mm-hmm. Oh, I'll be like, and that would be another great idea. If not CM Punk, Roman Reigns being the leader, that would be a great idea. Yeah. I think I think so that yeah, man. Roman Reigns coming back and him coming is definitely a big positive because now you got a big attraction. Yeah. I'm just curious about how they're gonna let him do things. Cause I hopefully he gets to be himself or do it the way he wants to, because I'd hate for him them to feed him lines and the and it not cutting out, you know what I'm saying? definitely like just from his shirt alone the shirt that said wreck everyone and leave and the way he was so vicious the way he was like literally beating on the fiend and the way he was talking to Braun Strowman like he said that he made him basically he's like you not nobody without me that didn't sound like the baby face Roman Reigns that sounded like a, a different that sounded like completely different from Roman like he wouldn't say that in the past <laughs> like hey man He's not a good guy. He's just the guy. <laughs> All right, let me stop. Let me stop yeah, recording. don't, don't, yeah, don't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot! <laughs> but uh, oh man. But you right, you right. I hope they, I hope they actually do make him heal. We will find out on SmackDown Friday Night SmackDown if he's really heal or not. Um, I'm pretty sure, but. I seen some fans complaining, saying like he's about to take the belt from the Fiend, and the Fiend just got it back, and he shouldn't have lost it to Goldberg. And I'm like, yeah, that's probably true. But at the same time, y'all act like Roman Reigns is not great. Like, give him his credit. Roman Reigns is good. They just need to stop feeding him lines and let him be himself. And to me, I think he'll be the the best, probably the best or the big the the superstar in the WWE that we need. Well, hey, man, I'm just saying Goldberg got two two matches left in his contract. Just let them both get stomped out by, uh, you know, Roman Reigns. And then, yeah, we'll call it even. Oh, yeah. We still <laughs> supposed to get the Roman Reigns versus Goldberg match. Like, we we're supposed to get at WrestleMania. Uh, well, we'll see if we get it then. <laughs> we probably may get it this year. <laughs> uh, well, you know, hopefully Goldberg don't break his toe or something into the ring, man. That's all I got to say. Put some respect on Goldberg's name, man. I, hey, Goldberg, if you're okay. listening to this, I, I got nothing but love for you, Goldberg. Remember, I, you was one of my favorite wrestlers growing up. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but before we get into our last few topics of the show, we got to take a quick break. And then right after the break, we're going to talk about remembering TNA, defend this wrestler, and the better stable debate. So we'll be right back. We are back from the break, and we're going to start off with, with just remembering TNA some, just remembering some of the, the, the great moments. And for me personally, I didn't watch TNA like um, like I wasn't a super diehard fan. Like I started watching TNA due to like my cousin. Shout out to Devon. Uh, I remember Devon would just watch TNA and I would go over to their, his house and I would just he'd be watching. I'd be like, dang, like. I ain't never seen this. It's an octagon ring. Like, what? And that's the things that stood out to me the most was the octagon ring itself and before they changed it. And that pretty and to me, that's probably one of the, you know, terrible decisions that they made was making it coming like that because it made us st- it made them stand out the octagon ring, but then just changing it to a regular ring and becoming more like the WWE and, and stuff like that or just regular wrestling to me I think they should have kept the octagon ring but some of the other things that just stood out to me was just simply AJ Styles like before AJ Styles ever came into the WWE I just remember watching AJ Styles back on TNA and I was like this dude is on a whole nother level he was kind of like a, a 
a look he looked at like at that time he kind of looked at like john cena somewhat the haircut and stuff he, he didn't look the same way the long hair like aj styles now and then of course samoa joe uh and of course abyss and christopher daniels those are the people that stood out to me before it started you know becoming you know like a bunch of wwe wrestlers start going there and everything like that um but those are the people mm-hmm. that stood out to me um, but yeah, let me get your thoughts on what, what what are some of the things you think of when just remembering TNA? So when I think of TNA, man, the first thing I think of is you know, Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle really got to show off on like how much of a missed opportunity it was for WWE to let him go. Understandably, it was like a huge safety issue for why they let him go, but I wouldn't have let it happen because Kurt showed off he still has the charisma and he still wrestled like a machine back in TNA. Mm-hmm. You know, I know when he was running out of time and he was having he had to go back to WWE, I'm like, man, this did not have to happen like the way it was, but it is what it is. And I really do like, you know, I like how if you weren't getting your just dues or you weren't getting the best of what you could get out of WWE, coming down to TNA was probably the best thing because that's how you get to see how well you could be. That's why when I saw Christian go down, to TNA, it was like a like a 180. It was like, yo, you got all this potential, and they just let and they squandered you like this. Come on, mm. and that's one of the biggest things about TNA. They let their stars be stars until you know Hulk Hogan showed up, and and it was just like, yo, you get to really see how dope a lot of these wrestlers are without them having to be under the WWE banner. Well, that's how we got Bully Ray, aka you know, uh, duh, what's it called? Dudley. Yeah, Bubba Ray. Yeah. yeah. And that's just like, bro, you're getting to see what he can, what he can be when he's just like a full on, you know, heel. And dude done it well. And then you'll top out, like you said, you got to see talent that are now in the WWE or who are dudes were waiting and anticipating to see get things done, like Samoa Joe. Mm-hmm. So to me, TNA was like, it may have been two show or the b show but at least it was something to be like man my fresh my favorite wrestler might be on and he's gonna at least be treated like a star there you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. yeah i let you know Hulk Hogan yeah and that was one thing too like like to go towards what you're saying i didn't even know first off i didn't even know christian was on tna like see that's i i didn't know T- christian ever made his way to tna but um that is one thing i did notice that it did let stars kind of do their own thing um like matt hardy he became broken matt hardy um on tna which pretty much was like was matt hardy's coming out party as a singles competitor because up until before becoming broken matt hardy it was just like he was great with jeff hardy but jeff hardy was obviously the star out of the group and then every single time matt would become a singles competitor it just was like he would just you know he would just be there he didn't really have nothing that stood out that made him you know uh made you want to watch him outside of him being yeah. a part of the hardy boys but then he was able to do broken matt hardy and it was it was actually good in tna and then they turned then when he came back to the wwe they turned it to woken matt hardy and it just it didn't it didn't catch on the same way it, it didn't have the same feeling as broken matt hardy but yeah, I guess the, so. TNA had some good things about it for sure, definitely, definitely. And um, but then the thing is also, I just wanted to point out one more thing. Like, I feel like hopefully AEW doesn't make that mistake like TNA did. It seemed like TNA just took in a bunch of WWE wrestlers, um, and they allowed it to change their company. Like, why did they change the octagon ring? Like, I would wonder. I would want to know why did they change that? Because to me, I actually like. I can tell you that right now. Why? So what ended up happening was Hulk Hogan ended up coming into the company. He he got a lot of control, which is like crazy. One of the things he wanted to change was actually changing the ring from an octagon to a square, mm-hmm. and. And for and a lot of fans had backlash, but he was trying to do it in a way to be like, look, there's a lot of changes coming away and a lot of good things. This is one of the things I feel that it will be a great change for things to go by. But I'm like, once you do that, you kind of get rid of the identity of TNA, man. He did. 
and then the, when the worst part about it is they were trying to make TNA directly compete with Monday Night Raw. Oh boy. Yeah. They got bodied. It wasn't even a contest. But that's the problem. Other promotions shouldn't even look at the WWE as competition. At least at least when they're small. Because if you're small and just building yourself up and you're comp- like WWE's in a whole nother league. Because WWE WWE gets interviewed on Sports Center. People look at the WWE and the WWE is the brand of wrestling. When you think wrestling, most of the time you're going to think WWE. And then if you're a real wrestling fan, you're going to probably think, okay, I'm going to watch pro wrestling in Japan or something like that or these other promotions. But when you when people just naturally just think of wrestling, they go WWE. It's like you shouldn't be trying to compete with them. And. And AEW, even though AEW has been winning a lot of the, the battles on Wednesday night with NXT, um, to me, it's just they shouldn't really try to be competing with the WWE. They just need to be the best AEW and find their own niche, find whatever they need to do to make them stand out. And TNA, whatever, and what made them stand out was the octagon ring. And they need to get back into that. They need to do that. They had a lot of great matches. I remember even Jeff Hardy had some great matches when he was in TNA as well. So, um, careful, careful, because I don't. I should probably show you that time Jeff Hardy showed up, drugged out in a for a for a pay per view actually. Oh, see, I didn't even know that. <laughs> I had no idea yeah. about that. Yeah, the whole entire reason why he was like let off, let out of WWE is because he couldn't. Um, he couldn't keep his uh, what's it called, drug his uh, drug use under control. Hmm. And uh, that's why they let him out. Then he ended up having that terrible match with Sting. And then what happening was, apparently Sting gave him a come to Jesus moment. And then, you know, Jeff became clean. Hmm. So that's why, like, yeah, so that's why Jeff is in the way situation he's in. Hmm. But see, even Kurt Angle has some great matches. Yeah. Yeah. uh, I wish during that time Kurt Angle was still in the WWE because we still would have got some phenomenal matches because Kurt Angle at that time was still the wrestling machine, like you said. But he had some great matches down in TNA with AJ Styles, Samoa Joe and things like that. So and wrestlers like that. hmm? Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, at one point, Kurt Angle held almost every single belt in the company at the same time. See, that's a whole part of Kurt Angle's career that we don't even really acknowledge or the WWE doesn't acknowledge. And it's like, um, you know, yeah, I mean, I get it. I get it because TNA is not part of the WWE, but still, it's still part of Kurt Angle's career. And it's still phenomenal matches that I would like to see on the WWE Network if it's not already there, though. I'm not sure. I haven't checked for that. But nah, nah. But hey, I can say this. You can buy the TNA app for like three ninety nine, and you can watch all those matches for free. And guess what? I will not be doing that. <laughs> I just like, <laughs> this I just like, I only played nine ninety nine for WWE Network. I did not even know TNA had a had a network or app. I ain't watching TNA right now. I'm pro- I'm probably gonna get the TNA wrestling game though. I'm gonna get that old wrestling game and do some uh, gamer videos with that. That's as far I'm. Gonna, that's as far as I'm gonna go, going to go with the TNA uh, support. If you have, yeah, if you have an emulator, you can download it now. The one for the came out for the PS2. You totally can do it. Mm, okay, it came out for Xbox. Oh, because you know why? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you know like Xavier Woods is in one of those games. You know oh, I see. Oh yeah, Xavier Woods was on TNA. See, dang, that was before before the new day, before all that. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But let us move on to the segment, and I'm sorry we got to do this to you, but let us defend this wrestler. Um, go oh, ahead. Man. So today's, you know, su- subject today. He's a walking creature. People think he's a myth. Some people think he's a legend. I just know him as trash. <laughs> that man is the big show. About, I want to say about seven feet tall, 400 pounds of walking garbage coming in and out that ring. And so far, people have the audacity to say that the athleticism. No, he's just big. And that is the big show. Honestly, my entire time ever seeing the big show, I've always wondered to myself, how did this man even make it to a WWE ring? This man barely can talk. This man barely can do anything. He's just getting by by his freakish nature of being able to lift people and doing one move correctly, a.k.a. the chokeslam. Mm-hmm. 
And then they always had the audacity to put him up against cruiserweights. Like, come on now, who are you fooling at this point? Why are you making Rey Mysterio face the big show? We know we're not, you know we're not stupid, but you keep doing it. Every single time. But yeah. And then on top of that, this man seems to always be the victim of always being the guy to face a celebrity. How it looked that you're fight, you're that you're seven foot something, and you're going up against Floyd Mayweather. Granted, he is the boxing legend, but the man is like five foot nothing. That is an embarrassing thing sight to see. God dang it! And then on top of that, let's not forget about the time that they somehow got you to agree to do a wrestling match against a sumo wrestler. That no one's ever heard of. God dang it. Is there a no, no clause in your contract? I guess not. Because who boy, it seems like this is the number one yes man in the WWE. I can bring up the time that every time you're in a WrestleMania, not WrestleMania, excuse me, every time you're in a Royal Rumble match, you're always the stupidest looking dude in there because you always have that moment where you're, you're not being touched and you're just looking around like, what should I do, guys? Every single time. And it makes it worse because you're the biggest guy in the ring. God dang it, Big Show. And then on top of that, I should not even talk about if you're a heel or if you're a babyface because you don't even know. And then on top of that, I'm going to keep it real with the Big Show. You're only good when you're a side piece to the main event. That's something that's terrible. Just terrible. Like the time you teamed up with Kane. Nobody was coming to see the Big Show. People wanted to see Kane. Like the time you teamed up with Chris Jericho. Nobody wants to see you talk. They just want to see Je- Chris Jericho. And then let's not forget. You getting the title is more along the lines of me. People don't know what to do with the belt. They just want to hold it, hold it for the next guy to use it. And then you being in big matches, they're only going to use you for one thing. Oh my God. He defeated the big show. The big slow. Like Braun Strowman. God dang it. You know what, D? Try to defend this man. Defend, defend this, this seven feet tall piece of garbage walking in and out the stage. All right, so here we're going to do this. Big Show, I'm sorry that we had to do this to you. But Big Show, here's what I will say. I feel like a lot of those things that you said is not, uh, is not exactly Big Show's fault. I feel like those things are the product of what the WWE has done to the Big Show. Like the Big Show, the WWE has turned big show hill and baby face every single time we've seen him um the wwe's has had big show face these celebrities even though i like the floyd mayweather match i thought that was a pretty good match even though i get your point but i i I think i think that was a pretty solid match not gonna lie um he got (laughs) he got knocked out with some brass knucks come on now like big show took that punch um another thing is um i feel like big show i feel like big show and just being in all honesty, I feel like Big Show is really good, but the problem is, is he was used too much. He stayed around too long with the WWE because, like, he shouldn't have been seen too many times. Like, kind of like how they use Brock Lesnar now as part-time, they should have did that with the Big Show because Big Show should have just came, and they should have always had him dominate. So I feel like everything that you said is what the WWE has done to the big show the writing everything like that like from a standpoint they they have made big show lose to the people he shouldn't lose to they have made big show turn babyface and hill back to back they have put big show in like irrelevant situations and matches and storylines um and it may be big show big show deserves some fault in that he probably should have said no more than yes um but Overall, if I'm thinking about the big show and I'm thinking about uh, his career, I'm thinking he's still a Hall of Famer. I'm still thinking that he's still super athletic for his size. And I'm still thinking that he gave us some good moments from when he was first in the WWE, uh, when he first came to the WWE and when he was in the WCW. It's just his career shouldn't have, uh, he shouldn't have let the WWE have do everything they have done to him. Because it does make Big Show look irrelevant. Like, we're, we don't fear Big Show anymore. So I feel like everything you said is more of the, WWE, the things that WWE has done against the Big Show. Not Big Show himself. 
You know what? I will agree with you because I don't have the same kind of venom I do for I did for Goldberg that I do for Big Show. Because mm-hmm. I will say this, he's always been the great, you know, the great wall for a wrestler to deal with. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And this is like he's massive, he's huge, he can do things correctly in the ring. So I'm just like, I mean, shit. If he can beat the Big Show, maybe he can be WWE champion. That's the way I always felt, especially when other guys beat Mark and like him of his nature. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They just but, they uh, they just it's just I feel like yeah oh no I was like they just did him wrong I, like <laughs> yeah I always cause like I feel like this I always felt like you if you beat the big show sometimes it felt like it was insignificant mm-hmm. and it just felt like oh man I guess this was just a waste of time I guess I guess you weren't the guy to beat somebody you know what I'm saying yeah yeah and I always hate the fact that they always keep doing this with big show they always make big show fight somebody three times smaller than them like stop doing that yeah. Is it either make him to be the guy you got to go through when you're having a championship match or make him be the guy that that um, what's it called? Or make him be the guy that is like the final boss, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. At the same time, though, he still lost to the spirit squad. That's unforgivable. (laughs) And it's just the thing is they had him lose too many times. If you have Big Show because he's that big. If you have him lose too many times to irrelevant wrestlers or to smaller wrestlers or to wrestlers in general, and him he's that big, it's going to make us then look at Big Show as like, okay, he's supposed to be a threat but because he's big, but he's not a threat anymore because we have seen him lose too many times. We have seen him be too happy at times. Then we've seen him just turn heel at random times. It's like, he should always be heel to me. And he should always just dominate people. But it's hard to do that with him now because we have seen him lose too many times. So it's like, yeah, they did they did Big Show wrong in his career. But I think that's more of a testament to the WWE, not the Big Show himself. I agree. I agree. I agree. So maybe maybe I should say defend the WWE on this one because <laughs> God dang, they did do the big show dirty because this man gets the title, but he immediately loses it every single time. Hey, I can't defend the WWE with that one. They just did him wrong. It's just that place. <laughs> I can't defend the WWE. They did him wrong. They really did big show wrong. And now we got big show on defend this wrestler and it's all y'all fault WWE. And y'all better not do Sasha Banks like this. Cause we will not try to defend. I we not going to have a segment about Sasha Banks towards the end of her career and talking about defend Sasha Banks. No, 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 no. WWE, y'all got to get this right. Y'all got to get this right. But let us move on to the last topic. The better stable debate, the Hardy Boys or Edge and Christian or the Dudley Boys. And you know what? I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm going to start this one off. I'm going to start this one off. And I'm going to say oh. I have no st- statistics for this. I'm just going based on feeling. Because they all Hall of Famers. I'm not going to say Edge and Christian. Even though I feel like Edge probably had the most successful singles run out of everybody. Um, well, no. not Ed- Edge has had the most successful singles run. Not probably. Um, I'm going to just go off a of base off a tag team. I'm going to have to go choose between the Hardy Boys and the Dudley Boys. And if I had to go just choosing to me, I feel like the Hardy Boys. To me... You the Hardy Boys? Yeah, I'm going to go Hardy Boys. Because... Just when I think of ladder matches, when I think of the TLC matches, when I think of the great TLC matches between all three of these tag teams, the Hardy Boys always had those. Jeff Hardy always had those moments. And it's like it's he, he Jeff Hardy has those moments that I'm going to always remember from my childhood to now. And the Hardy Boys, to me, they deserve to be looked at as possibly one of the greatest tag teams of all time. And. They're not in the Hall of Fame yet, but I already know they will be. And I just think I just I just they the Hardy Boys gave me a lot more great moments. And so I'm going to just go with the Hardy Boys to start off with. You want to say the Hardy Boys? Dang, you picked the, pick the best choice. Unfortunately, you didn't take the only choice, a.k.a. Edge and Christian. Mm. Even normally, when they're a tag team, they're fan- they're fantastic. Because due to the fact you get two people that you bet actually really like each other a lot, mm-hmm. and if you follow the story, even though the, the story of Edge and Christian is very similar to the to the one of Matt and Jeff, they were pretty much guys who were bouncing around the country trying to get into the WWE, trying to wrestle. 
is, is like I feel a lot more for Edge and Christian due to the fact they really were not supposed to set up for success. They were cronies at the start. Didn't want to give them a chance until they gave. They made a mistake in giving Edge the mic, and they got to show off their personalities. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, when I look at them as individuals, because I watched a lot of TNA, just to understand this, Christian is a very it was a missed opportunity, similar to the way Jeff is. But at least I know what Christian. If they gave him that belt, he would have run off running with it. While with Je- with Matt, it would have been a different story. Could you imagine? Version 2.0 Matt go getting the belt, no. and like that's that's what I'm talking about. So when they let Matt be Matt, and when he finally got to be broken Matt Hardy, maybe him being a champion would be a cool idea. Maybe just him being a thing would be a cool idea because all this cool weird stuff he'd do. Mm-hmm. But when I look at Christian, I know he could be a top star, and I know he could talk his way in and out of a situation. And watching his TNA run proved to me that yo. With he doesn't need Edge to be a superstar, and I think that's the biggest missed opportunity that WWE did not realize. And, and that's why I. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say this though, but when they're teamed up, they're pretty dang good. Mm-hmm. When they're teamed up, it's like they're one is constantly trying to one up the other, and that's one thing I love about it. It's not like the. It's not like I'm getting a carbon copy of the other, except one has a lot more charisma than the other with Jeff and Matt. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's one thing, one of the cool things about it. And But on top of that, you get a way more interesting match when when they get when they're set to face each other, too. Mm-hmm. But I will say this, though. When it comes to Jeff and Matt, they are the more beloved tag team duo due to the fact they're just more... They do a lot more and get away with a lot of it. And that's what I love about them. But when it comes to like, hey man, if I was to put the tag team duo and I was able to separate them and put them back together, that the best people for that is Christian and Edge. And then uh, obviously honorable mention to uh, Dudley Boys, because guess what? The Dudley Boys are, can operate separately. It's just that Bubba, Bubba Ray is the best. It's the better of the two, obviously. And and it seems like their niche is to be the, the attraction of we're here for hardcore matches and we're here to slam everybody through every ta- table we can find. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, my pick is Edge and Christian, you know, the better the tag team duo. The Dudley Boys definitely deserves more of a mention. Like to me, they could be the greatest tag team of all time. Because when I think of just their tag team, I feel like they're put together very well. Like, it's like black and it's black and white together. Come on now, like, and they showing that they is they're just brothers. They just brothers like get the tables, all that type of stuff. They were super entertaining, so they're definitely a Hall of Fame group. Uh, but oh you- my God, D, have you ever seen when they were in ECW and they were going off on the fans? No, I haven't. Oh my God, I gotta you gotta react to this then. Oh yeah. I gotta show you this. I definitely after gotta, after after the podcast, I'm gonna show you this, man. I'm gonna show you I'm gonna show you this. Okay, cool. Yeah, definitely. And but yeah, just like you said, I just think the Hardys was more beloved for me. They just like and even uh when you learn about their history, they had their own promotion, like in their backyard or something like that. When I learned a little bit about their history, and I'm like, it kind of gives me ideas. I want to throw my own wrestling promotion and stuff like that when I you know when I get more training in and all that type of stuff. But I don't know. I just think the Hardy Boys and them being actually brothers, it's like, and then being able to travel around the world together and be loved by everybody in there. They are Team Extreme. When I think of all these matches, I think of the Hardy Boys more than I think of anyone else. And that's the only reason why I would go Edge and, uh, with uh, the Hardy Boys. But Edge and Christian, definitely Hall of Fame group. And Deadly Boys, same thing. And then their TLC match together, I think that was WrestleMania 17. Phenomenal. Come on now. I don't think anybody's going to be able to beat that. Any tag team's going to be able to beat that. Um, maybe the New Day and the Usos. I don't know. Because they had some great matches too. <laughs> but the Hardy Boys, Edge and Christian, the Dudley Boys, just phenomenal. But yeah. Let us know when y'all, uh, let us know in the comment section if y'all watching this on YouTube or let us know, period, uh, on our social media. Uh, who y'all think was the better stable, the Hardy Boys, Edge, and Christian, or the Dudley Boys? And with this group, with these groups, I'm good with any one of them because they're all phenomenal. Uh, but that being said, we have made it to the end of a jam-packed show. 
And we're going to give Wait. our last few words for the people before we go. So we're going to start off with you, John. Honestly, all I got to say is please make smart and conscious decisions. Please think about your actions before proving, before doing them. Because it will obviously save you a lot of time and headaches. And yeah, please love and respect everybody and keep things moving. And worry about you. What do you got to say, D? Uh, yeah, Um, just to say, to go along with that, everybody just continue to work on themselves. Everybody um, continue to try to better themselves. Um, everybody needs to motivate each other, encourage one another, work together. And yeah, I'm going to say that. And everybody just, you know, um, everybody make sure y'all tune in to everything that we're doing. We're putting in work. And let us know what y'all think of all these debates, defend this wrestler, all these things. And we are the Voices Podcast. We'll never be silent. Thank you guys for listening and thank you guys for watching.